Hello and welcome to Baki Gaming and this is the Sims 4 tutorial how to make animated wallpapers part 1. In this first part I will tell you some basic info about these kind of wallpapers, show you how to change the material shader setting and how to add some new light overlay texture files. Part 2 will be about how to make those texture files move on your wall, giving them different speeds and change the scale of it. I do have to mention that I don't know everything yet about these kind of wallpapers, like I don't know how to make the moving parts non-transparent and which colors of the background will work perfectly with the colors of the moving textures. In this tutorial everything will work fine of course, but I can promise it will work fine if you use other colors than I do. You will have to test that out for yourself, but more about that later. The programs you will need are The Sims 4 Studio and a 2D editor like Photoshop or GIMP. In this tutorial I will be using Photoshop. For the people not knowing what animated wallpapers look like, take a look at my Great White Shark wallpaper right here. Looking at it like this will not make you see anything special. But when I press the play button, the sharks will start moving from left to right and slowly moving to the ceiling. Animated wallpapers like this one are made out of three different layers. Layer 1 is the background layer, which in this case is a gradient of blue. This is the diffuse map you would also change when making a normal wallpaper or mural. The second layer in this case is the one with the big sharks that swim on the foreground from left to right and are slightly moving up. This layer is called light overlay 1. The third layer is the one with the smaller sharks which also swim from left to right and slightly moving to the ceiling, but in a much slower speed than the bigger sharks. This layer is called light overlay 2. With this in mind, let's open up studio and start making our own animated wallpaper. First fill in your creator name, then go to the build section, select standalone recolor and click the build button. First be sure that for type wall is selected, then go to the search bar and type in 3DA1. Then select this wall and click on next. In the next window give it a name and click on save to make it into its own package file. Now change the name, the description and the price if you want. Then click the texture tab. Now go to the texture section and click the export all button to export the short, medium and tall wall all at once. Select the folder in which you want to save them and after that click OK. Now first open Photoshop, then open the folder you saved your texture files to, select them all and drag them into the Photoshop window. You can minimize them by clicking right here. After that, place them next to each other. For this tutorial we're going to keep things simple, so we're going to make all size wallpapers totally white. To do this, first press D on your keyboard to get the default for and background colors. Then click the first texture and press Ctrl Delete to fill it all with white. Do the same for the medium and tall texture too. Then click the short wall texture file again, go to file and click on save. Go to the medium wall texture file, click on file and click on save and do the same for the tall wall texture file. Back in studio, be sure that auto resize textures is checked, select short and click on import. Now select your short diffuse map and click on open. Do the same for the medium and tall textures too, so you will end with an all white wall for all wall heights. After this you can already click on save once, so if for whatever reason something happens to your computer you will still have it all saved. After this click the warehouse tab. The first thing we need to change to be able to make an animated wallpaper is the material shader setting. To do this click on the first material definition line, go to materials. Go to shader and click the preview walls and floors line. In the drop down menu scroll a little bit up and select preview ambient light walls and floors. Now as we got three different wall heights we need to change the shader settings on the other two material definition lines too. So on the left side click the second material definition line. Go to shader, click it and change it into preview ambient light walls and floors. Then go to the third and last material definition line, click the shader line and change it to preview ambient light walls and floors too. Now the DST image files you see right here are exact the same files as can be seen in the studio's texture tab. So one for the short wall, one for the medium wall and one for the tall wall. 
As already explained in the beginning of this tutorial, we need two additional layers, so two additional image files. To make them, first click one of the DST image files in the warehouse and then click on duplicate. As we will need a unique instance and we can't come up with something ourselves, Studio has a simple tool built in to help us making one. First close the add resource window, then go to tools and click on hash generator. Then we need to type in a unique hash text. Start with your creator name followed by a colon, then a short text describing your project and end with the date and time. This way your text will always be unique. Now copy the line behind FNV64. This will be our new instance. After that close the hash generator. Then select a DST image file and click on duplicate. Now paste the serial code we just made behind instance and click on OK. A new empty DST image file will appear at the bottom of the warehouse list. As we need one more new texture file, repeat the previous steps. So first create a new instance using the hash generator. So copy the serial code that will appear after you have typed in a unique hash text. Then close the hash generator, select one of the DST image files, click on duplicate, paste your just made serial code behind instance and click on OK. When scrolling down in the warehouse you will find two new DST image files which will become our light overlay 1 and light overlay 2 texture files. To make those actual files go back to Photoshop, then click on File and click on New. Now for both width and height choose 256 pixels. Set background contents to transparent and after that press OK. Now to fit the image to your screen press Ctrl 0. Now click with your mouse on the foreground color and set its color to red. After that press OK. Then press B on your keyboard to get the brush tool. To make the brush size larger or smaller you can right click and change its size. Set hardness to 100%. After that click somewhere out of the texture. Now first make a new layer by pressing Ctrl Shift N and after that clicking OK. Then draw a simple fish in red facing to the right. This will be our first light overlay layer. As the game will rotate these textures 180 degrees, we will rotate them now too, so they will appear right on our walls later. To do this, be sure that your fish layer is selected. Then go to Edit, Transform and click on Rotate 180 degrees. After this, press Ctrl Shift N again for another new layer. Press OK and press the foreground color box. Change its color to blue and press OK. Now first hide the red fish by clicking the eyeball right in front of the layer. Then draw a fish in blue facing the other direction. After that go to edit again, click on transform and click on rotate 180 degrees. This will be our second light overlay layer. Then go to file and click on save as. Then give it a name, change format into PNG, click save and click OK. Then hide the blue fish by clicking the eyeball in front of it and unhide the red fish. After that go to file again and click on save as again. Give it a name, change format to PNG and click on save. After that click OK, go again to file and go again to save as. This time we're going to save it as a PSD Photoshop file so we can change things later on in this tutorial. So give it a name, change format to Photoshop PSD PDD and then click save. Then press OK and go back to studio. Now click the first new DST image file at the bottom of the warehouse. Then go to the right and click on import. Then select the red fish and click on open. Do the same for the second new DST image file. So click it, click on import. This time select the blue fish and then click open. This will be a perfect time to save your package file again. So click save and click OK. We now successfully changed the shader and added the missing image files. In the next part I'm going to show you how to make these new image files move across your wall, how to give them different speeds and how to scale them if necessary. If you like this first part please leave a like and share it so more people will be able to find it. Let me know what you think about this tutorial in the comments down below. 
Don't want to miss any other tutorials, custom content videos or effect player episodes, then please subscribe and hope to see you next time here on Bikey Gaming.